Welcome back everyone to another video and today I want to optimize my widgets a little bit so it would be easier for us to create chests. The first thing what I want to do is go to my AI interactions interface and inside of here I want to add a new function and I'm gonna call this retrieve inventory so that uh, we can request an inventory from our shop or our chest and for this one I want to add an output and this needs to be the s slots structure type well actually let's call this so the name is the inventory and it is the s slots structure type and an ri now that means that in our ai shop now we can look for our interfaces retrieve inventory and we can pass along uh, the reference to our inventory now the next thing i want to add a new blueprint interface for my widgets and I'm gonna call this widget interaction and inside of here I want to have a single function and let's call this give widget variables and for this one I want a single input and this is gonna be the let's call this position and this is going to be a string. Now with that out of the way, let's go to our UI of folder and let's optimize our UI inventory panel so that it can hold not only the backpack but many other things as well. First thing, I will select the backpack text and create a binding for the content. Now let's create a new variable and let's call this position. So basically what kind of content does this uh, panel contain? And let's set this to be a string instance editable and exposed on spawn and now we can plug this in to the return value. Now let's go to the event graph and over here what I want to do is actually remove all of these nodes right here so the cast is valid check and the player slots because I want to create a new variable let's call this inventory and we are basically going to um, pass along the information when we spawn the widget. So let's make this into the S slot structure, instance editable, exposed on spawn, event construct can go now into our loop and we can pass along our inventory variable. Now for the create item data widget for the source I want to use the position and also if you remember in our shop we are creating the extra slots that are missing uh, in the inventory uh, but we are not doing this in this widget so what I want to do is at the end of this let's create a new variable and let's call this slots created let's make this into a integer and single variable let's drag that in at the end and let's do plus plus increment integer and this is going to add plus one every time we create a widget then from the complete I want to do a switch on string depending on this uh, content of this widget so for example let's create a single pin for now and I'm gonna call this shop so now for my shop I will be able to uh, create more empty slots now I'm gonna go to the shop panel and from over here I will copy the logic that we have for this so let's paste that in and basically so we are checking if our slots created are bigger than 19 and if they are not then well we are creating the missing slots and now the last thing on drop we want to pass along our position inside of our direction so that we would also automatically pass this value along now let's compile and save and let's go to our UI inventory and now over here I want to make quite a few changes uh, first and foremost I want to add a border to the background so let me drag that one in real quick let's make this into a full screen one and let's give this a little tent so 0.7 and to the full screen now the next thing what I want to do is select this border right here which contains our inventory and crafting buttons and make this into a variable so we can hide this if we are in our shop widget. Now for the inventory panel what I want to do is actually scroll down till behavior and set its visibility to be collapsed by default so if we don't have a backpack and we drop something in this area right here so that it wouldn't detect it. 
What I also want to do is replace these empty borders right here and uh, right now we are spawning these in the graph but for our equipment panel and the player slots panel we can do this over here as well so let's look for our equipment panel let's drag this on top of this panel then let's look for our player slot panel drag that over here and now we can select the parent so the border Let's right click this and replace it with a child. We can do the same thing for our equipment panel. So replace with a child and now it has the same positioning. Now one last thing in the designer, what I want to do is add a border in the middle of the screen and this is going to contain our shop panel. Now I'm going to give this a name, so the shop panel, make this into a variable and also I'm going to remove the tent so that it has no background. Now we can go to our graph and over here what I want to do is add the interface of our widget. So let's go to the class settings and down here we can add the widget interactions. Let's compile and save this and I'm no longer going to be running this event construct. Instead I will run the event give widget variables and let's see. So over here let's Let's promote this to a variable. So let's call this this position. Then let's cast to the character. So cast to the third person character. Then we want to get the owning player pawn as a reference. And now let's drag in our position and let's do a switch on string. So depending on what uh, widget is this. Let's give this a couple of pins so we can have, so let's see, um, let's type in the inventory, let's use the player, uh, we also have the equipment and as of right now we also have the shop and let's, let's add straight away also the chest. Now let's work on the top part first, what I want to do is uh, create the Dropbox widget. So I'm going to copy this one out of here. So we are creating the Dropbox widget, adding this to the Dropbox panel. Let's connect the inventory, player and equipment to this, since I only want Dropbox to be displayed while we dis display these widgets. I don't want to have one in the shop or the chest. Now one last thing in the designer, let's hide all the things that we don't want to be displayed by default. So let's say this shop panel. So if we scroll down a little bit till behavior we can change its visibility and we want to set this to be collapsed so that it wouldn't be accessible if it shouldn't be there and so that the drag and drop operation wouldn't detect it. And I want to do exactly the same thing for my inventory panel. I want to set its visibility to be collapsed and same goes for these buttons right here. So this border. So let's make sure this is collapsed and make sure to remember this border's name because we will need to set its visibility back in the graph. And also let's set the same for our Dropbox panel to be uh, collapsed by default and make sure that your background border is the first one in the line so that everything would stack on top of it. Now back in the graph from the Dropbox panel we can set its visibility in this case to be visible uh, since we just displayed it. Then let's go to the bottom part now and as our third person character let's get the interactable. Then from the interactable we want to retrieve its inventory content and we want to do this for the shop and for the chest. Let's create a widget and this will be our UI inventory panel and for the position let's use this position variable and let's connect our inventory from the retrieve node to over here then we can uh, drag in the shop panel add a child to this panel and then we can set its visibility to be visible and also on the top we want to display our buttons. So for the border let's set this visibility also to be visible so we can swap between the inventory and craftables. And now the last thing left for us to do would be creating the actual backpack content. So what I want to do over here is actually move this back a little bit and we want to display our backpack in any case of course if we have it. So let's get the equipped 
backpack from our character. Let's check if it is valid. Then if it is valid, then we want to again create a widget, which is going to be again our inventory panel. The position, in this case, I'm going to type in the inventory. And for the inventory itself, we need to get the player slots from the backpack, connect those. Then we can drag in our inventory panel border, add a child to that one, set its content. And we also want to set the inventory panel to set visibility visible. Then let's make sure to connect the execution pin over here and from the is valid. If it's not valid, we just skip these three nodes and go directly to this switch. Then also uh, from the inventory player and equipment over here, we want to create our craftables. So let's move those in as well. So select all of it, move it closer and connect the execution. Now I've already deleted, you can delete all the rest of the nodes that came from your event construct. Those are no longer going to be needed. Uh, all we need is what's in this function right here. Now let's change up some things, how we create widgets and we refresh those. So let's go to our third person character and let's go straight to our widget uh, interface function. So create widget function right here and let's move this part back a little bit. And what I want to do is Let's drag from this and let's, so what was the name, the widget variables. So give widget variables message for the target. We want to use our UI variable. So let's get that, plug that in. And for the position, we want to connect it to the create widget base node to create a new input. And we are good with this function right here. Let's go back to our graph and let's look for our refresh widget functions. So over here. So let's see here. We want to refresh the inventory widget, the position. So I'm going to reuse this function. So I'm going to connect the position to over here as well to create a new input. Now I'm going to disconnect this one right here and I'm gonna just going to simply copy the create widget node, create the UI inventory and type in the position to be inventory manually. Now with this being done, that means that we can actually delete this function right here. So we should be left with only this. And now we need to look for locations where we actually are refreshing our widget and pass along the position. So first position would be in our UI, in our confirm by, in the graph. Here at the end, there you go, the refresh shop widget is missing. So from our player, let's refresh the inventory widget. And for the position in let's use our direction and we want to move this up a little bit because for our shop we don't want to use that we want to use something else so let's copy all of these nodes connect them right here so we are removing from the parent we are giving this a small delay and refreshing the widget but instead of using the direction we want to use a source on this one now also on the switch uh, let's add a new pin for our chest and from our chest we can go to the move item now let's go to our amount selection widget and over here what we actually can do is so this part is needed if we don't want to ask for the permission i want to ask for the permission to move an item so i'm going to connect all of my executions to confirm by widget and also i'm going to connect the default to remove from parent and i'm also going to add a chest entry to the switch and connect it to confirm by as well if you don't want to ask for the permission to move the items you can simply leave the top part as it is and as of right now, in your project, you should have an issue that you only see one icon. So let me show you where I made a tiny mistake. And what I forgot is to copy this increment of the slots created to the bottom part as well, since we are using this slots, uh, slots created to detect in which column and row we need to place our widget. So now, as you can see, both of the widgets are working just fine, uh, running from a single widget. Now what we can do is simply delete our shop widget. So if we press delete, you would 
you should see that nothing is using this you should have this screen because if you are deleting a widget that is in use you can see that it is requesting you to change the reference so let's delete both of these widgets so basically i re-edited today's video in basically just the last minute uh, what i noticed is there is a duping glitch uh, in our system so as of right now if we would move items around and let's say we hold control and we select amount to be zero press yes you can see we duplicated an item so as long as we keep the amount at zero in some cases it is getting duplicated so let's fix that real quick and to do so we need to go to our amount selection widget and in the graph uh, let's see here after we cast to the third person character I tried to uh, the issue is this movable amount but I tried to set it back to zero on event construct and it doesn't really help so what I found out to be working is if we get our movable amount and we check if this is bigger than zero and if we then do a if branch check connect this right here and so on the true we can continue with the switch but if it's false we can just simply go at the end and remove it from the parent also a good practice make sure to uh, connect your empty executions to remove from parent as well and now everything should be working just fine so if we hold control select zero amount nothing really happens something only happens if we select one item at a time and our shop is working just fine as well so that's going to be it for today's video and I hope to see you in the next video. Leave a like, subscribe and peace out.